Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the continuation of the Ezekiel series, chapter 20. You know, after doing commentaries on Jeremiah, Isaiah, and now Ezekiel, I can see why all the so-called New Testament churches, so-called, do not read these books. I mean, after all, God shows his displeasure and judgment against what they call God's chosen people. And then they say that we're just a bunch of non-chosen people grafted into this Jewish tree. And yet God showed his displeasure with them and judgment. I mean, it's just reading this stuff is depressing. However, it's only, well, I shouldn't say, well, it, it's, it's kind of depressing, but I ha you have to realize this is for those that are disobedient. And people don't want to humble themselves in the eyes of the Lord. I mean, I'll admit it. He had to almost kill me to get my attention. I mean, seriously. Almost did. I mean, really close. But he did. And uh, yeah. All right. So let's get going on Ezekiel chapter 20. Verse 1. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then the word of the Lord, then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Oh, really? You guys are coming here to ask me some questions? I'm not going to answer you anything. Now, why would the Lord, you know, not be inquired of them? Well, verse 4. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. See, they're evil. They're disobedient. You know, you think you can live for the devil one day and then go to the Lord's house the next day? It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Verse 5. And say of that, Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. You see, people, the children of Canaan, the Canaanites, went to the chosen land that God was going to give Israel. 
And I think Israel was in Egypt uh, like 400 and something years. I'm not exactly sure. But they went from, I don't know, 12 families and to probably a few hundred thousand. Well, in that time period, the Canaanites had multiplied. They had built cities. They had planted vineyards, planted groves of fruit trees, vegetable gardens, had done all this infrastructure. And then God was going to let Israel go in, wipe out the Canaanites, and take over their cities. That was the plan. After all, the Canaanites were Satan's chosen people. And if you ask me, they're, they're back in the land. Yeah, everybody else thinks uh, Israel's back in the land. I think the Canaanites are back in the land. And I'm not talking about the Palestinians either. In the day I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. See, God didn't just want to take Israel out of Egypt. He wanted to take Egypt, Egypt out of Israel. Verse 8. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. Um, there was a little story, I think it's in Exodus, but I can't find it. But the people had rebelled and done something really bad. I'm not sure if it was Aaron making the golden calf and God was going to destroy them just absolutely get rid of them. And he told Moses, I'm going to make of you a great nation. You know, just like he told Abraham. And Moses interceded and said, Lord, are you, really, are you going to bring these people out of Egypt to, just to destroy them? You know, the heathen will even say that the Lord brought them out of Egypt so that he could destroy his people. So Moses interceded. I don't remember exactly where, but it's it's in there somewhere. Uh, sometimes you have to be able to remember the exact wording to look something up, and I don't remember. But uh, you know, that's what that's what we need today: intercessors, people to intercede before the Lord. You know, the Lord was not happy with these people. So, all right, let's go back to Ezekiel 20 and verse 9. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen, among whom they were in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness and I gave them my statutes, and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. You know, I have studied God's judicial laws. They work. Absolutely wonderful laws. Uh, you had to have two people to convict somebody of a capital crime. Capital crime was death and if you committed perjury if you lied about doing that to somebody 
and they found out you were lying, you were put to death. You got the penalty that you were trying to get to the other person. I mean, you know, and uh, basically all our laws today are the opposite of what the Bible says. Uh, perhaps some of you have heard of uh, what they call tort, T-O-R-T. For example, you're hurt in a car accident. Well, you sue the insurance company and then they pay you money for your injury. That idea came from the Bible. If somebody injured you, um, they had to make you pay you until you were well or pay you the compensation. You know, somebody's, if somebody's, uh, let's say somebody's had an animal that uh, caused an injury and, you know, escaped from its fence or whatever, whether it was a bull or a pit bull or whatever, and then it did it a second time and caused somebody's death. Do you know the owner would be put to death too? for It was considered like murder. Yeah. You know, if somebody knew that their dangerous pit bull escaped and killed a little boy that or girl, that they would be put to death, they'd be thinking twice about uh, having a dangerous animal like that, you know? And I love dogs. My family, my dad rescued over 20 dogs in our lifetime. Between myself and my brother, we had uh, four dogs, just my brother and I. And then my dad, psh, a lot of dogs. And I've known some pit bulls that are really sweet. I've got a family member that's got a pit bull, and he's just a big baby. Matter of fact, he loves to rub all you know, roll around on his back and let me rub his belly. He's just a big baby. But uh, some of them are just dangerous, absolutely dangerous. Very strong dogs. But uh, you know. God's laws work. They really do. I took legal studies in college. God, I've studied so many different fields. It seems like every time I try to get a career going, the Lord slammed that door in my face. Ugh. Oh, well. I wasn't doing what he wanted me to do. Hopefully, I'm doing what he wants me to do now. So, All right. Verse 11, and I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Oh, for example, you got a guy and a girl that are, uh, let's say they're, you know, teenagers. And they catch them playing around in a field, you know, having sex. Well, they were considered married. You know, they were considered married. Boom. Boom. So, that's why it was, and it seems like, um, it seems like Satan will always send the wrong person first before God does. It seems, that seems to fit in pretty well. Uh, Satan's plan, his method of operation, his M.O. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbaths. Now, what was the, the purpose of the Sabbath? The Sabbath, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It was a day to rest and relax, recharge your body, and to consider the things of the Lord. Matter of fact, that's a lot of times, uh, that's my day to do Bible studies. You know, God doesn't want us working seven days a week. Take a day off. Relax your body. Get some rest. Do some Bible studies. Relax and think about the things of the Lord. And yet, uh, the King James Bible, it says that uh, Jesus broke the Sabbath by... Well, let's take a look. 
boy, I'll tell you what, those so-called fake Torah keepers, boy, they hate they hate that idea. Oh, Jesus never broke the Sabbath. Well, my King James Bible says he did, and I trust the King James Bible more than I trust these bunch of fake Torah keepers. You know? Hey, Torah keeper, what does the Bible say to do with sodomites? How come you're not doing that? So don't tell me you keep Torah, you liar. You don't. You don't keep the Torah. John 5.18 Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill, kill him, Jesus, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Oh yeah. And I believe the King James Bible. And besides, the, uh, the apostles went through the fields of corn and plucked the ears and had lunch on the Sabbath day. And the you-know-whos were following around going, why do your disciples break the Sabbath? Yeah, they kept the law so perfectly that they uh, lied to have Jesus put to death. Yeah, right. So, verse 12, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But, yeah, but, that belongs to goats. Goats will always butt you, right? But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despise my judgments, which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbath they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it sh should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. See, God was going to destroy them in the wilderness. And like I said, Moses interceded and said, Lord, do you want the heathen saying, oh, well, he took Israel out of Egypt just so he can kill them all? I'm paraphrasing. But it's along that line, really. But I wrought for my namesake that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my mind my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. I mean, let's face it, what did Aaron do? He took everybody's golden earrings and made uh, the golden calf. And then they're running, they're circling it naked. Where did they learn that from? They didn't learn that from the Lord uh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, they learned that from Egypt. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their, their idols. Nevertheless, mine eye spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. That's right. But guess what he did? He made them wander around the desert for 70 years till all the people that did this died off. And then he took their children and brought them into the land. Verse 18. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. You know, don't do what your fathers did. Don't do what they do. Do what I tell you. Because I'm your father. I'm God the Father. I, I love you people. I want to do what's best for you. You know, 
look both ways before you cross that street. You got people driving around in their cars or chariots back then. And, you know, you don't want to get run over and get crippled or dead. You know, I care about you guys. And don't worship the devil. The devil tried to kill me. You want to be, if you want to go worship the devil, well, you know, don't be part of my people. So, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hallow my Sabbaths that they may be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. Like father, like son, right? Nevertheless, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbath. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish mine anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen, and disperse them through the countries, because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. You know, people, if you're uh, looking at a church that, you know, has Easter egg hunts and Easter bunnies and chocolate eggs and, uh, you know, Jeremiah 10 puts up those Christmas trees. I mean, where's that in the Bible? It's not. It's not. I mean, you know, people think, well, you know, we, we put up a tree, but we're not worshiping it. And, you know, we're, you know, God knows what's in our hearts. Yeah, that's the scary thing. The Bible says the heart is, um, oh, I have to look it up. The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And the answer is the Lord. I think I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. Yeah, God knows what's in your heart. That's a scary thing. You know, people, oh, well, you know, we're celebrating the resurrection by having a bunch of, you know, our pastor dress up like a giant Easter bunny and hippity hopping around and, uh, you know, Having the kids look for chocolate eggs, uh, really? I, I honestly, I wish they'd get a Playboy bunny and have her run around, let the parents see what it's really, the real spiritual uh, origin of that stuff. You know, there's a reason they do all this. Satanism with a nice package with nice shiny bow on it is still Satanism. Verse 25, Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb. What does that mean? The first child that came forth from a woman's womb, the firstborn, they passed him through the fire. They burned him alive in honor of Moloch. Sounds like Planned Parenthood, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. In that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, that I might make them desolate to the end, that they might know that I am the Lord. You know, the Bible says that uh, the firstborn belongs to the Lord. 
The firstborn belongs to the Lord, but they burned it. They burned it to Satan. Do you know what the word Holocaust actually means? It means a burnt offering. Look it up. Holocaust, a burnt offering. That's what it means. That's what this is talking about. Burning your child alive in the fire to Satan, to Moloch, is a holocaust. Oh, boy. Chaplain Bob, you're just so harsh. People, let me tell you something. When I read this stuff, let me tell you something. I don't want the Lord pointing his finger at me saying, you never warned those that listen to you. I'm like, oh, yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. I did the best I could with what I had. As long as I'm on YouTube, I guess I'll be making videos. And when I'm not on YouTube, I'll be on probably World Truth Video. I'm going to try anyway, so. Verse 27, Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. What do you mean trespass? You know, when you're in the wrong place, you know, you're on somebody else's land, you're trespassing. You're someplace where you shouldn't be. They committed a trespass against the Lord. For when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill. Yeah, they were looking for that stairway to heaven. Then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees. And they offered there their sacrifices. And there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. They worshipped the devils on the high hills and under every green tree. And witches love green trees. They even call them sacred oaks. You know, they dare. That's why witches always go out in the wilderness to do their little Satan worship and sacrifice children and stuff because they don't dare do that in the city. They don't want any witnesses. And they think their daddy Satan's going to give them great power and riches. And they think one day they're going to be able to escape the judgment of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, well, let's see how that works. Then I said unto them, What is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wow, put an O before that. Obama. Obama. Hmm. Verse 30. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, Ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of you? You know, you want to worship Satan and you think you're going to come and talk and ask me questions and I'm going to give you an answer? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols even unto this day and shall i be inquired of by you o house of israel as i live saith the lord god i will not be inquired of by you and that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say 
We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. Oh yeah, we're going to carve a wooden idol and a stone idol and we're going to worship that. You're going to worship a piece of wood? A piece of stone? Are you stupid? Can a piece of wood or stone save you? No. Verse 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and I will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Does this sound any different than what's going on today in the UK, the European Union, the USSA, Canada? No, doesn't sound much different to me. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God, and I will cause you to pass under the rod. You know what the rod is? Uh, it's getting whipped. You know, the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. God, by Revelation, it says Jesus is going to rule with a rod of iron. You know, remember getting a switching when you were a kid? Well, a rod is a lot worse. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. What is this bond of the covenant? Well, God said uh, the blessings and the curse. The blessings if you're obedient and the curse if you're not. Well, guess what? We're under the curse right now. And one place the blessing and the curse is mentioned is Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. You want to uh, worship the devil? Well, then you can suffer the same fate as the devil. And people, we're, su we're under the curse. And I will, uh, let's see, Ezekiel 20, 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter in the, into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye, serve ye every one his idols and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. You know, you want to worship the devil? Don't be coming to my house on a Sunday or a Sabbath day. You know, don't be polluting my, my name, you know. In 1 Corinthians 10.21, Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Verse 
verse 39, As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye everyone as idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruit of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings, where, wherein ye have been defiled. Oh, I can relate to that. I can remember my evil ways and all my evil doings. Wherein ye have been defiled, and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south, and prophesy against the forest of the south field, and say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched. Sounds like the forest fires in California, don't it? Oh yeah. The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. Then said I, Ah, Lord, they say of me, Doth he not speak parables? Uh, really? You think this guy's speaking parables? He's telling you right here, you know, judgment, people. You either want to obey and get a blessing or be a rebel and be cursed. And the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And you know what the penalty for witchcraft was? Death. Period. You want to be a rebel against the Lord? You want to serve the devil? Hey, there's a church of Satan. Can you imagine the church of Satan knocking on your door? Hello? Oh, greetings, sir. I'm from the church of Satan. Uh, how would you like to be damned for all eternity? Uh, I think I would slam the door in their face. But, uh, you know. Hey, they got chaplains in the jails. Well, what do they tell the inmates? Hey, just be yourself. Keep doing what you want to do, you know? I don't know. All right, well, that's the end of chapter 20. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, Amen.